So, uh, good morning, uh, Professor Hans. Uh, thank you for granting us uh, the opportunity for the interview here sir, on the Southwest Tower of the second enclosure uh, of the Angkor Wat Temple, sir. Uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Hans, uh, you have been working uh, on the restoration of the Bari Leaf, uh, you know, around the Angkor Park and especially inside the Angkor Wat Temple, sir. Uh, as you mentioned, sir, since uh, 1995, so it has been nearly 30 years now, sir. Uh, especially the body leaf, uh, you know, that is uh, extruding from the wall, you know, the thing that people see all the time, the, pe the thing that the people admire all the time, sir. Uh, sir, because of, you know, the nature of restoration in Uncle Park, as you mentioned, most uh, restoration, they focus on the uh, stability of the monument, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. But for you, sir, the German team, you focus on the aesthetic stability of the monument, sir. So my first question is that, why do you choose to restore the aesthetic in this case, sir? Yeah, actually, uh, when I came first time here, uh, I recognized that many of the bus reliefs of the wonderful Apsaras on the uh, entrance uh, doors uh, are in a very precarious state of preservation. Yes, sir. And uh, just one word uh, of, of the naming, uh, you talk about restoration. We would call it conservation. Mm -hmm. yeah? We separate conservation, restoration, uh, reconstruction, anastylosis. So these so, are different steps. Yes, sir. Uh, restoration, or conservation is the the technique with minimum intervention on the uh, on the object to keep what we can see, but to stabilize what we can see. Yes, sir. And uh, actually, I'm a geologist mm. and a conservation scientist. Yes, sir. I was teaching at uh, our university conservation of stone, of stucco, of what we call mineral porous materials. Yes, sir. Yeah? So this is our uh, profession, this is our specialization that we focus on decorations, not so much on the stability. For stability, yes, architects, engineers are responsible. But we, conservation scientists, we feel responsible for the decoration of the monuments. Yes, sir, but normally, you know, before we can start the aesthetic, let's say, restoration, we need to stabilize the entire structure first. Yes. Is that correct? And then uh, aesthetic uh, uh, conservation can come, uh, can come later. Is that yeah. what you mean, sir? More or less, yeah. Or but less, yeah. I think it has to go uh, parallel, mm. yeah? Uh, because uh, I will show you some picture, the state of preservation of, of some of the bus reliefs, not in the galleries, they are quite well protected. Nevertheless, we have to conserve there as well and monitor yes. and maintain. But on the exposed, uh, weather exposed eras, uh, some are very, very precarious. And if we wait until the stability is reached and then we start, maybe a lot of the decoration is lost. Uh, I think this is an interdisciplinary, we need an interdisciplinary approach mm. that all different uh, professions yes, sir. who are responsible for the care of monuments work together. Uh, uh, and of course, if there's a work where something has to be dismantled, yeah, yes, we sir. cannot do the conservation. Yeah, yes, But sir. we can do the conservation before it is or uh, emergency conservation before it's demand dismantled mm. and then they can dismantle and after we the reassembling we can do the full conservation. So it, it wouldn't affect uh, the aesthetic of the conserved uh, body leaf, so it's okay when we uh, you know uh, disassemble the structure. Uh, it should not. It, it should, should not, not <laughs> affect the, yeah. the bus reliefs, of course. Yes, yeah. Sir. So, of course, all intervention should not damage the object, even in small eras. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, uh, sir, you know, because, um, you know, right now we are standing on the top of one of the towers at Onko, and uh, each tower has a lot of, uh, you know, let's say, shape uh, carved yeah. to them, sir. So, and the same thing applies to other temples in Onko. So basically, there are so many body leaves, sir. So your team, you know, let's say with a limited human resource, of course, I mean, you cannot deploy everyone to yeah, conserve yeah. the body leaf. 
So how do you uh, prioritize, you know, where to restore first and where to restore last? Uh, let's say practicality. Actually, say. maybe to explain this, it's better. Uh, I, I go back a little bit yes, how sir. we developed the project. Mm. Yeah. Uh, of course, when I came first, I saw at Angkor Wat the badly damaged bus reliefs and mainly the apsaras. Yes, yeah, sir. because this apsara, these apsaras could be reached from the floor mm. and uh, directly investigated. Yeah, the higher up the pediments, etc., you need magnification yeah. glass or drones yeah. <laughs> nowadays or something yeah. to uh, get information about the state of preservation. Nevertheless, of course, also the first view that also many of the bus reliefs on the pediments are in a bad condition. So at that time I did, did a survey in the Anchor Park on all temples which have been accessible. Yes, and what is clear, uh, we came back to Angkor Wat because there's a difference between the mountain temples like Angkor Wat mm -hmm. or Takeo and the temples in the forest yes. like Taprom, uh, Prea Khan, etc. Mm. Uh, there we don't have these badly damaged bus reliefs uh, on the walls yes, sir. because there we have a more or less constant climate which protects and this uh, goes back to the question what is happening on the mountain temples yes sir. they are totally exposed to the weather mm -hmm. yeah a lot of rain then sun drying and later on after construction the beds started to settle in the temple uh, uh, animals were on the temple and in the last phase also would say uh, not well adapted restoration interventions were made, which all brought in uh, physical effects on the on the on the stone. Yes, sir. We are geologists. We are so called the stone doctors because we know best about the stone. And you told me uh, before, oh, you cannot remember all the names. Of course, there is a huge variety, and this is science. This is science of geoscience. Yeah. Yes, sir. But here in Angkor, of course, we only have few different stone materials. It's the one from Angkor Wat, mm -hmm. which is used for many buildings. Yes, sir. Then we have Pantas Ray, which is uh, sandstone as well. A very pink but, one, sir. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. a very stable one due to its composition. The composition is different from the sandstone here in Angkor Wat. Yes, That's sir. why it's well uh, much better preserved. It's not the color, it's the composition itself. And then we have, for example, one type of stone which is only used for the towers on Takeo, oh. which is another type. Yeah? And then we have different qualities in these different uh, or different varieties in these groups. Yeah? Yes, sir. So in Coquer, the material is somehow different. It's similar like this one, but nevertheless different. That's why we have to investigate the composition, which is a job of geologists. Yeah, I thought to you the main tool is uh, first the, uh, the uh, polarizing microscopy. Yes, yeah. And in the next step, we can also use the scanning electron microscope. I will show you a picture. And uh, the other point is we have to investigate all physical and mechanical parameters of the sandstones. Mm. And there we can see they differ quite a lot. What, what do you mean by mechanical parameters of the stone? Strengths sir? of the stone, yeah. So we it's, it's we measure compressive yeah. strengths, oh, tensile yeah. strengths, we measure so-called elasticity modulus, which, uh, which is a very yeah, significant value for the uh, for the strengths of, of stones, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, if I may recap, so the first one that you might do is first to uh, to reach out to the easier part of the temple first. Second is to study the composition to the accessible part uh, yeah, of the accessible temple. Part. Yeah. And then study the composition. Yeah. And then after that, we study the the mechanical stress of and the, the physical. The physical. For example, very important is water absorption. Mm. So when it's raining, the water. Uh, the stone absorbs water by itself mm -hmm. yes, and when it's drying the water goes out again. Mm. So this is a very important part. Another part which is different between the sandstone from uh, Pantasre or Takeo top, uh, this sandstone 
is when the water is going in, it's expanding. Yes, sir. And when it's drying, it's shrinking. Yes, sir. And this is an extremely important factor for the weathering of this Angkor Wat sandstone. Yes, yeah, sir. I will can briefly explain. And there are other parameters like water, uh, water vapor diffusion, etc., which we have to know because also these parameters are important to know for the conservation. Yes, to, to, uh, for the conservation mat materials, they have to be adapted to these parameters of the stone. Yeah? Mm. In former times, for example, cement was used cement, for yes, the sir. restoration. Cement is not adapted to the sandstone. Oh. Cement is much too strong. It doesn't take up water while the sandstone takes up water and is very, quite soft. So they fight each other. And their, th yeah? their, their thermal expansion is also stronger, sir. The th th thermal exp expansion yeah. is, is different. Mm. But uh, for this sandstone and Angkor Wat and for the what we call deterioration yes. pattern, for the damage, mm. the uh, water absorption and the expansion of the stone, the uh, hydric, we call it hydric expansion, expansion by water is very important. And then finally, I was talking already about uh, after some time beds settle and the beds droplets, the urine and etc. Oh, they create salt. They create salts, yes, sir. damaging salt. Mm. And with the water in the temple, it's moved into the walls and then mm. is causing damaging out damages outside. But the main factor for these serious damages here, we call this scale formation, scaling. Oh, yes. can, can you show me if there's it's a scaling? It's not possible here, okay. but yeah. I can show you in a picture. Yes, yeah, sir. this is... On this side, yeah, we can see this is in the second level in the northeast corner, an era which was taken picture by uh, 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 Delver uh, or Giselle Iver in 1995. We mm. see a lot of damages here, yeah, missing Apsara, yeah. Mm. But these two Apsaras are still in place, yes, sir. but already badly damaged. Oh. Yeah. When we came the first time, it looked like this. All gone. Oh, so this is in 1995? This is 1995. And this one is 1965? 1959. Yeah. Wow. So, one thing. Second, if we focus on here, you can see this era and there, the light is coming through somewhere. So somehow this part is detached. We asked the permission to do the conservation, but at that time it was not possible to get permission. When we came next time, it looked like this. So this is in... In one, in just one year, sir. Less than one year. Less than one yeah. year. Yeah. So uh, also this piece was left. Mm. And here you can see what it means, scale formation. Yes, so sir. this whole face, this whole arm, everything is totally detached. Yeah? Yes, sir. I can show you an, another example where we have been working recently on the first level, Apsaras. You can see the damages, yeah? Mm. And you see the breakages and detachment. It's a, a gap in between, if you look here closely. But the very serious damage is, if you look here, the whole bus relief is only hanging on tiny little spots. It's totally detached. But sir, structural, structurally, uh, let's say, why do they detach as layer? Because the stone, they, they are supposed to this be is, one, one mass, yeah. one single... This you know. is what I want to explain. Yes, sir. So, when the water is penetrating in, the stone expands, mm. and then it's shrinking. Every day. Every single expanding, day. Expanding, yeah. shrinking. Expanding, shrinking. From the beginning when it was built. Mm. But after some time, due to the distribution of water in the, in the stone, oh. the biggest stress is somewhere behind, behind the relief. I There's see. a big stress. And so due to this stress, the sandstone breaks and crumbles. It's not on the surface. It's in a certain depth, let's say, of 
in this case, five to eight, seven centimeters. Mm. So there is the biggest stress, and there the stone deteriorates due to this expansion, expansion, and, and shrinkage, yeah, shrinkage, shrinkage yeah. expand. Uh, the maximum expansion of this stone is at least four, five, six millimeters per meter of stone. Oh, so it's okay, so. measurable. Yeah, it's not only a very tiny little uh, amount. Yeah. So, sir, if I may, uh, you know, uh, clarify. So the layer of the breakaway part is determined by how much water is absorbed by the stone. Yes. Yeah. And how mm. big is the expansion rate? Uh, when the water is absorbed, oh, yeah, okay. and the shrinkage. Not not because they put Apsara as another layer. No, to the stone. no, 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 it's, no, it's, no. it's one yeah. massive stone before mm -hmm. when they built. Then there's a second factor after some time yes. when the salt from the beds is arriving in this era, which is already crumbling. Oh. Then the salts cannot pass to the surface anymore. Mm. Yeah, there's a sort of a barrier for. Uh, transport from inside to outside yes, and sir. these salts when it's drying they crystallize so they enforce the uh, action of the swelling and shrinkage minerals mm. and for this we need the analysis of of the stone the the clear analysis detailed analysis so this is an uh, uh, so-called syn a thin section analysis in the polarizing microscope where we can identify the different components of the stone. Yes, yeah. The sandstone from uh, Bantasrei would look totally different, not so diffi many different components, only quartz. Yeah. Mm. And this is the uh, scanning electron microscope picture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here we see a component which is a feldspar, we see a uh, quartz grain which is the main component. And we see these tiny little uh, elements. You see, it's they are uh, just yes, two sir. microns. Two uh, microns in, in And we length. call them clay mineral. And this is the specific uh, mineral for the weathering of the Angkor Wat sandstone. Yes, sir. This is the mineral which is expanding and shrinking. This is causing this damages behind the uh, the uh, surface together with the salts from the beds. But yes sir, I mean, it, it can be a bit of a silly question, but why do we need to look so microscopically small in order to understand, you know, the stones, so let's say? If we what, don't, what is inside that? <laughs> yeah, if we yeah. don't know about the composition of the stone in detail, mm. here we cannot see these uh, tiny little minerals, clay minerals in the in the uh, uh, polarizing microscope. That's we have to use the uh, scanning electron microscope to identify these minerals mm. as one of the factors of the damages of the damaging reactors reactions of the sandstone. Yeah? Yes, and this is important to understand what is happening. Why is it not happening in Taprom? Oh, so the, the stones are different, basically. Like, like no, the they are similar. They are similar. They are similar, but here it's exposed mm. and a lot of water, and here the action of the clay minerals cause the damage. Yes. Sir. In the forest, it's more or less constant climate. Of course, also raining and uh, little mm. changes in humidity, but not so much action. Uh, in swelling, shrinkage, swelling, shrinkage, and especially the salts in this condition there, where it's always very humid. Mm. You know, when you go to Taprom, you immediately you start sweating. Yeah, it's so yes, humid. Sir. Yeah, let's say 70, 80, or up to 90 percent relative yeah. humidity. And there, the salts stay in solution. They don't crystallize, oh. dilute crystallized dilute disc while here every time they are diluted when it's raining or high relative humidity in the evening and then when it's drying when the sun is on they crystallize so this is always this we call uh, uh, weathering mm. these uh, cyclic changes crystallization dilution crystallization dilution swelling shrinking swelling shrinking heating cooling heating cooling this is causing the weathering yes sir but just to clarify a bit for example um, you know the reason why let's say the pyramid in egypt can survive very long 
is that they are exposed to very dry air for a very long time. So they don't they don't go through the, the cyclic uh, you know phases like you mentioned. Uh, it's yeah, like actually, the, the main structure of Angkor Wat is uh, also still standing, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. compared to the uh, pyramids. Uh, the pyramids are big blocks, of course, mm. there's weathering as well, even when it's in dry era. Uh, we have been working in, in, uh, in temples in Egypt yes, sir. and uh, with also decoration with bus reliefs. And there we have mm. similar problems. They are not so much it's uh, also not uh, sandstone, it's limestone. Uh, and of course, they are the, the action different. They don't have these clay minerals. Mm. There it's mainly due to the salts. Yeah? Mm. And also there we have changing climate also in the evening. Oh. It's getting humid, so salts dilute. Yeah? Especially there we have from the, from the bedrock still, it was a, a sea. Yeah. Oh, and in the yeah. sea we have sodium Salt. chloride. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And there the damaging salts are sodium chloride. Here it's much different. It's nitrites, phosphates and others. So the composition of the salts is of course also very important. But we have also in Egypt, in dry climate, yes, we have uh, damages. Mm. We have been working in southwestern Egypt, which is really far desert and really hot in the day, in the night. It's going down to zero nearly even in summer yeah, or in spring. In the night, it's more than 40, 45, mm. up to 50 degrees. There we have been working on wall paintings, uh, uh, rock art, painted yes, rock art. Yes, sir. And of course, we also had, it's on sandstone, we also had damages there. Mm. In this case, also due to damaging salts, for example. Yeah. But sir, yes, I, I also read some part of the Angkor, the Angkor Charter on stone restoration. And they also mentioned a lot about salt so you said about you know salt crystallization so the salt it's the way they damage the stone in what way sir due to crystallization and dilution this cyclic process yes, sir. you know the and there is another uh, also mechanisms of the salt which is also damaging but uh, if we stay with the with the uh, uh, crystallization the uh, Salts, when they crystallize, they need more space. Specific mm. in corners like this, yeah, they grow in between little weather, where, where oh, the quartz grain yeah, meets. Yeah. And when they crystallize, they need more space and they push away. Oh, that, that is what you mean by stone expansion. They, they expand. No, like, no. no. Oh. The minerals expand with water. Okay. But the crystals from salts, they push away. They need more space and push away the one grain from each other, which mm. is causing damage. Yeah. Yes, sir. I Actually, see. maybe this is uh, uh, something we, we are talking with our team. Of course, this is a scientific part. Yeah? Mm. You have to know and you have to learn and yes. it's quite complex. Yeah? Yes, sir. We are just working on some problems at Preaco where we have very specific salt composition. Yeah, which we didn't have here in Angkor Wat yes, and we have to analyze and then draw our conclusions out of the analyze what how to do uh, how to treat the salts there yeah yes, what different salts do we have how is their behavior and how can we yeah, protect the monument yes sir but you also use a lot of uh, you know let's say chemical to restore the stone sir this is then this the is next step. The next step, okay, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I told you in former times a lot of cement was used, mm -hmm. also acrylic resin. Yes, sir. And uh, I told you we have to know really our stone material, the composition, the behavior, the physical parameters, the mechanical parameters that we can use conservation materials which are very well adapted to the stone, so fit to all these different parameters. Yes, yeah? uh, as I said, uh, the, the cement is much, much stronger, rigid, much higher elasticity modulus than the stone. Mm. It doesn't take up water, the stone takes up a lot of water. Yeah? Uh, and we have to find materials which have similar water uptake like the stone, 
which have similar expansion rates like mm. the stone, which have similar physical or mechanical parameters, similar elasticity modulus. Yes, sir. That's why we are doing a lot of investigation on the stones in the lab. Yeah. Yes, Here sir. you can see Plum Colen is totally different from Anker Watt sandstone. Mm. Yeah. On top Colen sandstone. Yeah. But they are or, all sandstone. They are all sandstones. But, but in, inside the scope, scope, you know, microscopic world, they are a bit From different. the composition, yeah. from their structure, yeah. from their uh, physical and mechanical uh, parameters, they are a yeah, very huge yeah. variety. Yeah? Mm. And this we have to know, that we can adapt our conservation materials. Yeah? For example, this is much coarser, the, the components, than this. So for this, we would, you, could, you could use a coarser repair mortar than for the Anker Watt style, a sandstone where it must be a fine, yeah? Mm -hmm. Just one example, yeah? Wow. And yes, uh, it must be, what is the second point, compatible with the sandstone. Yes, sir. So I said sometimes it was used acrylic resin, natural uh, or acrylic resins are not compatible with the sandstone. Their behavior is totally different from the sandstone. So we use uh, for as a chemical, which is used for consolidation, yes, sir. for uh, a binder, for mortars, etc. We use ethyl silicate. Mm. The ethyl silicate is liquid. The molecules are small like water yes, sir. and they can penetrate into the stone like water and inside the mortar, uh, the stone, they react and form SEO bonds. Mm. Uh, so SEO, SEO2 is the chemical formula for the main component of the stone, which is quartz. Quartz. quartz mineral. That is yeah. why we see a lot of quartz uh, when we excavate some part of the temple. They are like a big, big quartz. Yeah, the, they are, are, they are, are gravel from quartz, yeah. Mm. But the sand in there, it's much finer, yeah. Yes, but the main component is quartz. SEO2, the com uh, chemical formula. Mm. And the consolidant we use, the composition is also SEO2. Yes, sir. So, this is compatible. And with this, we can also use as a binder. Uh, you asked uh, uh, also, what about uh, the, the uh, said mortar? I would say stucco at the stucco at the at the brick temples. For this, of course, we can uh, don't use as a binder for mortars uh, ethyl silicate. We could use, but it's not very well adapted. We use lime. Yes. So normal mortar is made lime and sands. Yeah. Here we use ethyl silicate and sands. Well, by, by, by the way, the sands we use are from sandstone and uh, from quartz made. Yeah. Yes, we sir. break the sandstone and make specific sands. And this is uh, uh, yeah put together with, with ethyl silicate. Yes, and then we have a mortar which can be applied. For example, you can see it here. The joint here, this is artificial sandstone. This one, sir. Yeah, normally people wouldn't see that this is not a sandstone. Mm. One would think this is a mortar, huh? not a mortar, sandstone. Yeah. So you mean that artificial sandstone is like you make it we uh, make, make, make the make. sort of an artificial sandstone, oh, okay. which is a well adapted in color, in grain size, yes, in the physical behavior, water uptake, expansion rate, uh, mechanical strengths, adapted to the quality of the uh, condition of the sandstone. Mm. So this is the main philosophy behind conservation and so conservation basically science. Basically, we cannot, if we cannot change the entire stone, at least we can reinforce them in, in smaller yeah. cracks, sir. Actually, yeah. here, this part, in the upper part, nothing yeah. is necessary. Mm. Yeah. You, it, well, it's even not necessary to clean. You can see here, here it's badly damaged. So this was consolidated. And then we can see everywhere small tracks of mortar to stabilize the scales or the layers. Mm. 
And then we use the motor for closing the joints as well with these. It's all the same type of, of artificial sandstone. They yeah? have sim very, very similar property. Similar properties yeah. to the stone itself. This is, mm. we, we test just recently sometimes, you know, the, the materials we use, sometimes they are modified by the factory. Yes, sir. So we have to go back and the team is doing new samples. We oh, test the new samples yeah. and adapt again the system to improve the system that it's better adapted to the, to the era we, we have to use. You see there, down there, very badly damaged stone parts and everywhere you can see the, mm. we think the team is excellent to do this, the very well adapted uh, uh, application of mortars.